What is up, everybody? I'm very excited about this question today because it, it's going to be a great way for you to see how math is on the MCAT and how math on the MCAT is not only restricted to physics. You know, a lot of students think it's only physics, but in this context, you're going to see how it's relating to biology. So let me give you the question. It says, assume that you have the following mRNA sequence transcribed in a eukaryotic nucleus. Exon 1, exon 2, intron 1, exon 3, intron 2, exon 4, intron 3, exon 5. And the question is saying, assuming that you have to keep both exon 1 and exon 5, what is the total number of splice variants you can make with the above sequence? So what is the concept being tested here? So first of all, I'm going to point out that this is a eukaryotic nucleus, right? If you go back to the question, you'll see me circle eukaryotic. And the reason why that's important is because in eukaryotes, the mRNA is transcribed, and but before it goes out to the cytoplasm to get translated, it actually undergoes splicing. And the splicing is basically the fact that some of these things will get cut out and some of these things won't. So before we try to understand and quantify that, let's go a bit over what splicing is. So splicing, um, it's often called alternative splicing. But before we get into that, you need to understand that the mRNA, as we already saw, is made up of two things, the exons and the introns. So the way I like to remember it is that the exons, exons, the X represents that the fact that they could exit the nucleus, okay? They could. Doesn't mean they will, they could. And the reason why they, why they will, may exit the nucleus is that because they may be part of the final mature mRNA after splicing. So after splicing, you'll look at this image at the bottom. Look at this image. You'll see that exon 1, exon 2, exon 3, and exon 4 are exons. And you'll see that in one splice variant, exon 1, 2, and 3 leave the nucleus. And that means exon 4 here, you'll see that exon 4 actually is left out. Similarly here, exon 3 is left out. So the point is, exons may be part of the final mature mRNA after splicing. So the exon may be a part of it, and it may not be. But the point is, usually, the final transcript only has exons in it. Which brings me to my second point, introns. Introns are always, always, always removed from the mRNA, which means they are never in the final mature mRNA. So introns stay in the nucleus. That's the way I like to remember it. Okay, they stay in the nucleus. And look at the image that we were referring to before. Look at the bottom left-hand corner. You'll see that the blue, blue regions here, the blue regions here are introns. And you'll see that once the whole thing and splicing happens, there are no introns in the final product. Both protein A and protein B have no introns. So notice how the introns are always spliced out. Even in this lower right-hand corner, this line connecting the colored things are introns. And you'll notice that in the final product, the introns are never present. So the introns always have to be removed. The exons may or may not be removed, but the point is the introns are always removed. Let's now quantify this. So remember the question said, assume we have the following sequence. And we have the sequence shown here. And I've drawn the sequence with this lovely diagram of, um, if you look, you'll notice that the red and green represent the exon and intron. So the red is indicative, so you'll see exon 1 here. Do you see that? Exon 2, and this is intron 1, exon 3, intron 2, exon 4, intron 3, and exon 5. So I've drawn it symbolically with these like colors, just to make life simple. But the question also says, assuming you have to keep both exon 1 and exon 5. So we have to keep exon 1 in our final transcript, and we have to keep exon 5 in our final transcript, right? We need to keep this guy, and we need to keep this guy. And now, we need to understand how many different variants can we make, assuming we have to keep exon 1 at the beginning and exon 5 at the end. Well, let's go to exon 2. For exon 2, I'm going to change the color here. For exon 2, we can either keep it in, or we can actually take it out, because remember, exons can be a part of the final transcript, but they don't have to be, right? Similarly, for introns, remember that introns always have to be excised out. So for any intron here, there's no choice. It has to go out, right? There's no chance for it to stay. On the other hand, exon 3, again, because it's an exon, can be in or out of the final transcript. Depends on how it gets spliced, right? It could be either be a part of it, or it might not be a part of it. So, now if we wanted to quantify this, if we actually wanted to quantify this, here's that diagram I made on the previous image, right? And I told you, you need to have exon 1. So that's why exon 1 here 
and the last exon, I think that's exon 5, both of those are must-have. So there's no option there. But remember exon 2 here, this exon 2, that can be either in or out. So that actually gives us two possibilities for exon 2, right? Similarly, for the intron, the intron, this right here, intron 1, has to be out. And because it has to be out, there's only one option. The, this intron has to be removed, right? There's no other way for it to exist. Similarly, this one, this next exon, which is exon 3, I'm not going to bold it. I'm not going to circle it to make you see it's an exon. This exon can be in or out. There are two possibilities for it, right? There are two ways that can happen. It can either be part of the final transcript or it may not be. Similarly, for exon 2, that's kind of what we did, right? We said it could either be a part of it or it might not be. Similarly, for exon 3, that's the same exact thing. Now, this is intron 2, right? This green this green thing right here, intron 2, this has to be removed. So there's only one option for it. If it has to be removed, there's only one thing that it can do. It has to be removed. Now, this is exon 4. Exon 4, again, can be either in or out. It can be part of the final transcript, but it may not be. So again, you have two possibilities. And last but not least, this, oh, I shouldn't have circled. I should not have circled the 4 here because it's an it's an exon, so let me just not circle it. And lastly, we have a third intron. The in, this intron, again, always has to be out, so there's only one possibility here. So there's two possibilities here. But the point is, by talking about these numbers, two possibilities here, two possibilities here, you can now multiply these together to give you the total number of possible splice variants, right? Because you can either have a splice variant with number two, or you might not have number two in it. You can either have a splice variant with the third exon or without the third exon. You can either have a splice variant with the fourth exon or without the fourth exon. So the point is you're, these numbers at the bottom basically enumerate the different possibilities of RNA that you can make. And when you enumerate everything, you'll see that you can have 2 times 1 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1, which then gives you a total of 8. There are a total of 8 possible splice variants. And what it ultimately comes down to is Look at the exons, right? I'm going to number the exons here because we don't care about exon 1, right? Because we, we have to have it. And we don't care about exon 5 because we have to have it. But for exon 2, you can or cannot have it. That gives you two possibilities, right? For exon 3, you can or cannot have it. That gives you two possibilities. And for exon 4, you can or cannot have it. You may have it, but you may also not. There could be that many possibilities. And because each of these has two possibilities. It can be the either in or out, right? Similarly for three, it can be in or out. And similarly for four, it can be in or out. All we have to do is basically say, oh, there's two possibilities here, times two possibility here, times two possibilities here, which will then give us our final answer, which is two to the third, which is already eight. And I hope this makes sense. I hope I'm showing you how to combinatorically do this. This is definitely one of the harder questions, but the answer here is definitely D. And it shows you how such a simple mRNA splicing concept is actually pretty convoluted. If you have any questions about this, feel free to message me, feel free to comment below, uh, subscribe, share, like, and please, please, please let me know if you have any more questions. Thank you, and uh, see you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. If you want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here. Another link to one of my videos right here. And another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it because I'm still an early YouTuber trying to get it down. But a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe. Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful.